the Mirror and the Light, 1539, the king's fourth wife, Anne of Cleves, arrives in England. While the bridal party from Cleves is held up in Calais by bad weather, they pass the time in jousting and visiting from house to house, devising masks and plays. A merchantman is reported wrecked off Boulogne, casting on shore a cargo of wool and Castile soap. He, Cromwell, imagines the ocean foaming, bubbles on the crest of each wave. Please God fetch Anna soon. The king is anxious. Everyone who has seen her seems delighted with the new queen. From Calais, Lady Lyle writes to her daughter Anne Bassett, one of the new maids of honour, and Anne takes the letter to the king, handing it with her deepest curtsy. The king reads out the letter. Good and gentle, to serve and please. So there you are, he says to the girl. What news could be better? You will have a loving mistress, and I a loving mate. Ambassador blushes. Mate seems blunt. Possibly she doesn't like to think of the king in bed. How times change. Ten years back she would have been in bed with him. In Calais, Anna is lodged in the Queen's apartments at the Exchequer. She's invited the English lords to supper. She's used to dining in public and doesn't know it's no longer the custom of English kings. But she means well. She wants to see her new countrymen at table and learn their customs. Her manner is regal, Lord Fitzwilliam reports. He and Gregory Cromwell spend an hour with her, teaching her card games that the king likes. It's her own idea, and a clever one. The wind changes. 27th December, Anna lands at Deal, in the rain and after dark. They row her ashore, a princess coming out of the sea. She will go from Deal to Dover, from Canterbury to Rochester, and by the first week of the new year, she will be approaching London from the east. The king will meet her at Blackheath, conduct her to Greenwich Palace, and marry her by Twelfth Night. <laughs>